That is just the haunted saying that the wind and she obeys. He's the one who sailed with me. He's the master of the sea. He's the one who sailed with me. He's the master of the sea. This crazy thing started, Billy Joel. I ain't even going to start it yet, but uh, we're started. And um, listen, uh, you see Victoria taking pictures. She's our uh, new church photographer. My grandson Cameron used to do that, and Victoria's a friend of Cameron's, and they went to school together to learn how to take photos and all that kind of thing. So uh, that's what she's doing. and It'll be for, um, of course, when you're on here, this is Facebook I'm on right now. We're kind of not very uh, structured in our presentation. I'll have put the label on this thing after a while. But uh, uh, so if you are, if you're, um, uh, if you got a lot of warrants on you and you're ducking from the law, you might want to duck the camera. I don't know. Run for it. But if you, <laughs> if it's just small stuff, they don't much care about that, you know. So. <laughs> But if you're a big time crook, you might want to duck. But uh, anyway, this is just some uh, family uh, photos of, of our church family, amen? amen. And that's what we're doing. So Billy Joe, find us a find us a, uh, this thing's going already. Uh, find us a, a song we can st stand up and sing. Give us a page number. Let's sing. Got that new anointing oil, folks. We're going to be using that today. Uh, at the end of our prayer service, between 5 and 6 before service tonight, we're going to be doing some anointing with oil. That's between 5 and 6. We used to eat at that time. We knocked that out and we're praying now. How, how many of you think praying is more important than eating? Yes. Yes. Only one person raised their hand. No, the whole bunch of people <laughs> raised their hand. Now that means you need to be here at 5 o'clock for prayer. Yes. Hear that, Billy Joe? The fattest one in here raised his hand. The fattest one in here, Billy Joe. <laughs> and I'm right behind him. No, you ain't the fattest man in here. Travis the fattest man in here. Oh, 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 yeah, oh yeah, man. Yeah, please, you got me to out a little bit. Thank you, Travis. <laughs> So we get used to cameras today. Let me see. Let me see. There's a church family. We're going to sing here in a minute. Let me see. There's the fattest man we got, Travis. Here's the second fattest, Billy Joe. I appreciate that. And and here's the third fattest, Pastor. All right, we're going to go down here now. Uh, and, and we're gonna we're gonna sing this opening hymn. Let's stand for the opening hymn. Come on, folks. What page we on? Huh? Come on, sing. I got you on the camera. Get your book out. Fear not, I am with thee. Peace be still, and all of heaven grow. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keep me singing as I go. All my life was wrecked by sin and strife, filled my heart with pain. Jesus wept across the broken strings, turned to slime record again. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. With my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Feasting on the riches of His grace, blessing me to shepherd wings. Looking, always looking on His smiling face, that is why I shout and sing. Jesus, Jesus, sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as 
Remain standing for prayer, Lord. We thank you for our wonderful Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior. We're thankful for it, thankful we can meet uh, in the name of the Lord today at this local church. Lord, we know you've died for the local church. You've died for every one of us individually, but you want us to assemble in the local church. Yes. And we pray now uh, that you'd bless our service. Come down uh, uh, upon us, Lord, in mighty power, that we could have a spirit-filled service. Save that lost soul that's near as hell here this morning and reclaim a backslider and give Christians higher ground. Bless now as we go forward to this service. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Joe, we're going to keep going here. You have a seat, folks. I know that I'm not worthy to call upon your name. All my life I've been a sinner, and for that I am ashamed. But I heard you would listen, so I'm giving you my plea. Yeah. I'm too unworthy, Lord, to come to you. Could you please come down to me? Amen. I know there are others who could offer more than I. I promise you I'd understand if for me you had no time. I think I've just hit bottom. And I'm looking up to see I'm unworthy, Lord, to come to you Could you please come down to me? I guess I must be reaping From the seed that I have sown Lord, you owe me nothing We haven't spoken for so long but if you could spare some mercy, I pledge my life to thee. I'm unworthy, Lord, to come to you. Could you please come down to me? I know there are others who could offer more than I. I promise you I'd understand if for me you had no time. I think I've just hit bottom and I'm looking up to see I'm unworthy, Lord, to come to you Could you please come down to me? Yeah. I think I've just hit bottom and I'm looking up to see I'm unworthy, Lord, to come to you Could you please come down to me? Come down to me. Amen. Give me a good hand. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, yes sir, I do. Keep playing. Down, I tell you, this keep is, playing. This, I tell you to stop. This is about the blood. And without the, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Man. Thank God for His willingness to shed His blood on yes. Calvary's cross. For our sins, man. Ain't that wonderful that He was willing to do that for us? Amen. Without even Amen. knowing us, He knew us then, but not like you. We see each other now. You know what I mean? He's seen us through yeah. history. Looking down through the ages, God beheld the dying soul. Sin had brought separation. Evermore could man behold. There must come. One whose blood alone redeems, bringing gifts to the Father, all the souls made white and clean. And when he sees me, he sees the blood of the Lamb. He sees me as worthy, and not as I am. 
He views me in garments as white as the snow. For the Lamb of God is worthy, and He washed me this I know. So He left that holy city, traveling on to the cross, just to bring the God to glory and rescue all the lost. By His blood He entered into the throne room of our God, and on the mercy seat He placed His salvation for us all. But when He sees me, He sees the blood of the Lamb. Yes, He does. He sees me as worthy. Not as I am, he views me in garments white as the snow. For the Lamb of God is worthy, and he washed me this I know. Amen. Give me a good hand. Well, listen, we're going to take our offering uh, at this time. Uh, Gregory, if you can get the pan and come up here in the front. Billy Joe, I'm going to have you... Uh, ask God's blessing upon this offering today. Give as God has blessed you and uh, the Lord will uh, the Bible says given it should give unto you. Press down, shaken together and running over. Learn the joy of giving and meet our needs. We have uh, responsibilities and needs. They just uh, paid about $700 worth of electric bill and utility bills and so on and so forth and up comes our insurance payment again that'd be about twenty four hundred dollars twenty two hundred dollars but anyway uh give as god has blessed you billy joe pray and ask god's blessing upon our offering sir our wonderful heavenly father lord we thank you dear lord for your mercy and your grace dear heavenly father that uh, you can bring us all back out here together we have a real good crowd here a good good number dear lord to come out to most of them to worship you and and uh bring tithes and offerings to you, dear Heavenly Father. I pray that you make it go far to further your word, your, your ministry, dear Lord, that uh, people can be saved by hearing your word. And I thank Brother Varga for uh, being here as a mediator, dear Lord, but between you and, and, and the people here, dear Lord. He loves the, he loves the people here, those uh, the homeless and the, and, the, and the persecuted, dear Lord. And I, I pray that your blessing will be on this sovereign today. And, Bring us closer to you than we've ever been before. In Jesus' precious name, we ask you to amen. 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 I'm going to sing you a little bit, okay? Amen. Go ahead. I'm kind of homesick for a country to which I've never been before. Time won't matter anymore. Beautiful land, I'm longing for you. And someday on the I'll stand there.
Give Billy Joe a great hand. Praise God. We love Billy Joe and his playing. All right, we're going to get to the Word of God. I, uh, just learned about this Facebook thing. Uh, I think it's wonderful. Why not use technology for the glory of God, huh? Amen. The devil used it, didn't it? Yeah. And they've got it, and, and uh, some people are, uh, they have. I, I saw that they're even uh, in, uh, in South Korea, where the Olympics are this year. The Winter Olympics is going on right now. They... Uh, they don't let the teenagers use. Uh, I don't remember what the t is. It's quite a span of time that they're they're not a, allowed to use their internet stuff, their Facebook and their social media and all that because it it gets to take people over. You know, some people they're they're completely over overwhelmed with that, and uh, and some are on the Facebook and do that. Some are watching pornography nonstop. It's all available there. Uh, on the uh, on the internet, uh, so the devil is running wild with it, and and people are becoming uh, cyber junkies and porno junkies and and all of that. But thank God, uh, we can use a Facebook for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. It's going out there now, and I'm not my son, uh, my grandson uh, uh, Victoria is taking over from camera, doing our video stuff and website and things, and. Uh, we got to meet a little bit afterwards too, Victoria, because uh, you got to hook me up with some more stuff on Facebook. You're a Facebook expert, right? You know all about that. She does. She's good. She's uh, she's very uh, humble person, but uh, she works for a college and she does their stuff and everything. So she'll sound do real good. well. And what? And your sound over your huh? Your sound over a few. Sound what? Your sound box over a few CDs and things. Before we not been able to get a sound. You can't hear me. I'm talking about the CDs you play over here. They're not coming through there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you want Victoria to fix that I want too? To fix it. Come on. <laughs> Do you know anything about audio? No, come on. Uh -oh. Quit trying to put everything on her, Billy uh -oh. Joe. We got, I got enough I for her to do. That well, well, it didn't hurt to ask. It didn't hurt to ask. She's a. Uh, she's a photographer, and and she yeah. told me what she can do, and she yeah, didn't. Oh, you 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 need to bring your relative over here that knows about it. Roger, he's in Missouri now. Oh, he's in Missouri. Well, Ron must must know about it. Ron, no, Ron, really. Ron don't know anything about it. Ron don't know anything about. It. Did you hear that, Ron? What <laughs> Joe said? No, he don't know. Anything. He know anything about audio? His wife has to take care of all that. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, anyway. Um, Tonight, we've, we've replaced eating with praying at the 5 o'clock hour. Now, I've got me a, got me a fresh, fresh bottle of anointing oil here. Now, there's not magic about it. This is just classic, pure olive oil, mild. And it's real thin. I had a jug, I had a jar of this stuff similar to this, but when it gets old, it gets real thick. Joanne shaking her head because I, I put it on her forehead, I think. I remember she couldn't get it off for two weeks. It's so thick. <laughs> I used to like have to get it out with a spoon. But this is real light and uh, it's easy. But we're going to anoint some food. The reason I'm not doing it this morning because I want you to come back for prayer meeting. If you're serious about wanting some Holy Spirit on you and want some healing or some Holy Ghost power, come on at 5 to 6. We're going to pray and anoint with oil between 5 and 6, 5 and 5.45. That's when we'll have our prayer time. It might extend. We might be doing more. 
But that's, uh, we'll have that. Got more folks coming in. That's good. Come on over, folks. We're having church. Come on over. Um, so anyway, between 5 and 6, we'll do some anointing with oil. Picture of the Holy Spirit. There's no power in it. I have no power other than I can be God's instrument. God, God's the blessing one. God's the one brings down the, the blessing and brings salvation and brings healing and all of that. It's all God. It's had nothing to do with this preacher. Amen. Other than I can just be his instrument, and you can too, uh, uh, for the glory of God. Uh, so uh, I got all stirred up this morning. Someone come in this morning and started talking like they knew something. And started bragging on the NIV Bible and how and uh, people in this day and age, Billy Joe, they're so ignorant about the Bible. There's one Bible right here, King Jim. I got two giant print Bibles here. I got two of them on my pulpit here. One, two. Stuff's running away from me here. I, I like this. I brought this other one from home today because it's got a few more. Uh, this one here is yeah, they're both about the same size print King James Bible I started uh, in fact <clears throat> you wonder why I didn't have Facebook on uh, 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 on my Sunday school lesson this morning I, did, I didn't teach a Sunday school lesson I got stirred up this person brought some stuff in and started ranting and raving about the NIV Bible and all these new Bibles, all this garbage that they're putting out. Now, I put it up on the, I put the thing up and I sent it to her. I said, you better listen, you better look at this. I put it up on the, on the big screen here. Gail Ripplinger. Gail Ripplinger, uh, that woman uh, knows more truth about the Bible than you can shake a stick at. Now, you got a lot of these so-called guys with five and six and ten doctor's degrees that are lost and going to hell and uh, if, you, if you're going to go to them and they call yourself Bible experts, they're liars. I wouldn't trust anybody that's not born again. I don't care how many degrees they have. All these new Bible, but you list that. We, we watch some of it and, and church, uh, after, after church today, after we get done eating, you want to watch the rest of that, and you watch it. I, I posted it on Facebook. If you're watching on Facebook, uh, you, you go on, uh, I, just, I don't even know. Victoria, you got to teach me how to put rescue mission on there and all. I just got Gabriel Varga on there. That's it. But I, I posted it this morning. Gail Ripplinger, New Age Bibles. She, she wrote a book about this, and uh, the, the thing that she, she talks about that book and takes some stuff from it, it's over two hours long. But if you're a thinking person, if you're a Christian especially, you better get a Bible in your hand and get rid of all this trash. Yeah. Billy Joel, there's not, there's, a, there's not enough preachers today. I remember in the old days when there's a lot of preachers would stand up on their hind legs and, 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 and preach that the King James uh, Bible is the Bible and preach against it. They don't do it anymore. Baptists don't do it anymore. They say they're King James only, but they never preach about it from the pulpit. But you read Gail Ripplinger, you look at that New Age Bibles, and she is one smart woman. And she shows you, and she knows it. She studied the Greek and the Hebrew. She got the goods on all these phony baloney new Bibles. And and, and you you watch that. Put it up. Uh, look it on a poster. Go to YouTube and look. Gail Ripplinger, New Age Bibles. It's over two hours long. But... Um, we're not going to have any revival in this city or in this church unless we have a Bible. There's only one Bible. Uh, since the new Bibles have been coming out, since Horton Westcott in, in the middle of the 1800s, there's been 200 versions put out. All of them are a bunch of baloney. Yeah. They try to trick you with the New King James. They say it's from the original received text. That's a bunch of baloney. There's 5,200 changes in the New King James, and it, and it leans <clears throat> it leans towards Horton Westcott in many ways. It leans towards the Mormon Bible in many ways. It leans towards the Jehovah Witness Bible in many ways. So I, I'm just, I, if I'm the only preacher in town that'll do it, I'm going to stand up against these fake Bibles. And uh, you other Baptist preachers that watch this thing too and I uh, send stuff to, uh, 
Uh, you better get a little guts too, and I don't care. Uh, uh, you don't belittle me. Uh, these idiots that call themselves scholars and and they know nothing about the blood of Jesus Christ, and they're lost as Hogan's goat. I'm gonna listen to them about Bibles and translated. Well, what was she tell me about? Oh yeah, they got all this new information. They got a bunch of garbage information. I want revival around here. I want revival in our church. I want revival in our city. I want revival in our nation. And uh, if we don't have a Bible, how are you going to have revival if you don't have a Bible? Now, you that watch in Sunday school, you got to pay attention. And I hope you'll stay and watch it after. And I hope you come for prayer time at 5 o'clock. Like we got written on our sign out front. This is a house of prayer. Amen. We're going to start praying at home and in church. Amen? Amen. We have not because we ask not. You know why a lot of you people in church here today, uh, and you people on this Facebook, you know why you can't pray much? you got so much sin in your life. you got too much Super Bowl in your life. you got too much wine, women, and song in your life. you got too much foolishness. I don't care. I'm getting too old to hold back, Billy Joe. I gotta let it all rip now. I text it out. I text it out today to about half of you, not all of you, but about half of you. I text it out today. The, them around my, uh, them around my texting uh, page. Uh, a couple over 200 people. I text them out every day. Someone told me lately, oh, that's a waste. It ain't no waste of time to me. Some people seem to be blessed by it. But I text it out today from uh, Romans seven. And Romans 7 tells about the old carnal nature. You look at it. If you haven't got it texted, uh, and I was going to preach out of Romans 7, and then I thought, well, you know, Romans 7 goes into Romans 8. And so, uh, you know, I kind of got that. And then, then I started thinking, did you know, did you know that, that the book of Romans, it's one letter? It's got 16 chapters. But it wasn't, it wasn't changed into chapters until... Way, way along, long time. I mean, they're reading the manuscripts. There's just the manuscript of Romans, you understand. And Gail Ripplinger goes to all this about the manuscripts. She's real smart. She got all kinds of degrees. But she's a Christian. She knows what that stuff's all about. But you, you watch that New Age Bibles, uh, Gail Ripplinger. But uh, so I started thinking, I said, well, I got to go to Romans Seven, I got to go to eight. What about six? What about five? What about four? What about three? What about two? What about one? So I'm back to Romans chapter one. That's where I'm starting. And I'm going to be praying. That person to come in this morning, they said, oh, I've been in the study for Romans. It's been for months, and we just do a verse or two at a time, and she's in the new Bibles and stuff, so I don't I think they're wasting their time. I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to take a month on a verse. Some people do. I'm not against them. I'm not against them, but I just try to get the simple stuff that I understand and that you can understand that will help us. Amen? So let's go to Romans 1. Let's go to Romans 1. Praise God. Give me the old-time religion. Give me the old-time religion. Give me the old-time religion. It's good enough for me. Let's ask God's blessing on this. Heavenly Father, got a good crowd here this morning, and then we got a uh, out there uh, Facebook crowd, and this thing's supposed to be shot up to YouTube today too, so I don't know where it's going, but take it home to hearts today, Lord. Bless as we start the book of Romans. We're going to preach on it for a while, a few days, maybe a week, two, month, I don't know. Romans, the, the, the book of the dynamite of the gospel. The dynamite of the gospel. Save that soul nearest hell in church here today and out in Facebook audience. Help us now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Romans 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ. You know, back from the beginning, Moses was known as the servant of Jesus Christ. Joshua was a servant of Jesus Christ. Anybody that mounted to a hill of beans all the way through the Bible, old and new, the only thing they were known as is servants. 
God only can use servants. God doesn't use big shots. We don't need any big shot preachers. We don't need any big shot Christians. That preacher that you had there in, uh, uh, was he in Knoxville? Where, where was Brother Bivington? What, what city? Knoxville. Knoxville. He was a country preacher, just a humble man. Preached to thousands and thousands of people. You know why he was so great? Because he's humble. He's just a servant. So he and others and, and anyone today that's going to be worth a nickel, just going to be a servant. I'm very leery of people come into my church and they start bloviating about how great they are and what they did here and what they the red flag goes up for me. Yeah, amen. I says, watch that blow hard. Keep an eye on he or her. They're too busy to tell about how great they are. Why don't you just shut up? Why don't you show me what you got? Don't tell me, amen. <laughs> See you talk a lot, isn't it? Amen. Don't tell me how good you can play the guitar and sing. Show me. He shows me. I wouldn't have him around here if he wasn't any good. Uh, you, you know, the only reason I, the only reason I keep Brother Billy Joe around here, he sings with pathos. You know what pathos is? That's with the heart. He'd be singing and start crying. He'll sing a cappella, Beulah Land, and the tear be coming down his cheek. Amen. That's singing with heart. That's the difference. I mean, you got, you got to, you got to have heart, and especially a heart for God. Amen. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ. We're starting right in Romans 1. We're going to go right out down the line. We'll get to Romans 7. I'm texting out Romans 7 today because I'd planned on that. Uh, but uh, And it says, Call to be an apostle, separated under the gospel of God. See, everybody that's a Christian, whether it's Paul or, or Silas or, or anybody, we're separated under the gospel message. We, we've missed this name of separation. Separation is we, we've lost it. We ought to be separated uh, in the way we dress. We ought to be separated uh, in the way we talk. We ought to be separated in the places we go. Stay out of the gin mills. Stay out of the honky-tonks. Stay out of the stadiums. I don't care if they're baseball stadiums or football stadiums. Now I'm stepping on your toes. I talked to someone yesterday He says, Oh, I'm so sad professional football season's over. I can't wait. Oh, shut up. Watch some men playing a child's game <laughs> for millions of dollars because of idiots like you and I that watch them and listen to them huh? and go see them. I think, I, I don't know. I didn't watch the Super Bowl. I couldn't even tell you what the score is. Someone told me who won. It doesn't make any difference. I'll tell you what. I heard someone out here in the line. I don't know if they're telling the truth or not. But he says, you know, the cheapest cheap, cheap, cheapest uh, ticket you could get to the Super Bowl is $4,000. I don't know. I know some of them, certain ones, they'd be up to $10,000, maybe hundred. I don't know. That's why you get uh, uh, a man playing a child's game. And a bunch of idiots watching it and going to see it. Hope I didn't bust your bubble here this morning. Separate under the gospel of God. Every Christian ought to be dedicated to God. Dedicated to the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Jesus Christ is the power of God. On everyone that believeth, the Jew first and also to the Gentile. You listen to Gail Ripplinger on this New Age Bibles. And he te she teaches you what all the words of these this uh, uh, wicked devil's Bible, NIV. I'm, I'm getting so sick of people. Uh, we're being destroyed with these new versions of the Bible. They're, they're the devil's versions. Yeah. Oh, did they, some preach say, yeah, I'm for, the, I'm for the King James Bible, but I don't speak about it much when I preach. Oh, you coward. You supporter of the devil. Amen. Stand up and say something. I ain't ashamed of it. I'm too old worried about being ashamed of anything, Brother Billy Joe. I'm going to snort and rip and do what I can. Well, they still can. Amen. Which he had promised 
before <clears throat> which he had promised before by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. See, Holy Scriptures, these new NIV and all these new Bibles, uh, they, they, they don't have a Holy Bible. They take Holy out of there time after time after time. They take the Lord Jesus Christ out time after time after time. Oh my, it's terrible. That got me stirred up watching that first part of Gail Ripplinger's. They, didn't that get you, Billy Joe? Did you yeah. did you get that? Yeah. We're going to stick around. Uh, uh, you stick around afterward and see it too. You might get so excited you want to stick around. I'll show you a lot of good stuff and just stick around and we'll have prayer meeting at 5 o'clock. Amen? He said, what about eating? Why don't you fast once in a while? Jesus done it for 40 days and 40 nights before he was filled with the Holy Ghost. No, after he was filled. I'm sorry. He got baptized. He was filled with the Holy Ghost. Then he went out and fasted and prayed for 40 days. Then he come and had his public ministry. Well, he's all fired up with, with the power of God. Amen. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. You see that sentence? All these new Bibles, they take out words about who God is. See how powerful this is in verse 3? Concerning His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Every one of them words are so powerful and so important. Which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. He was a Jew. Salvation is of the Jews. Jesus was a Jew. So, uh, uh, but uh, I was, I had, I had a big presentation. Today's the 11th day of the, uh, of the month, and I read Acts 11. I was going to have our Sunday school lesson on Acts 11 today. You ought to read it today. I think I had a pretty good thing going there, but I got, I got hung up on that Gail Ripplinger New Age Bibles, and uh, we just, we just watch that thing through, through Sunday school. I just says, well, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not, and some of you on Facebook says, why, why would you on it? Uh, because I was, we was watching Gail Ripplinger. You ought to watch her. I got it posted on Facebook, too. Figure, figure out how to do that. Instead of hit Messenger or email, it goes to where it says Facebook, and I hit that. And it says post, boop, I hit that. I hope it's up there. I don't know how you how to find it, but it's supposed to be posted on Facebook. Gail Ripplinger, New Age Bibles, or go to YouTube. You can find it there, too. And it says, and declared to be the Son of God with power. I love it. Declared to be the Son of God. Don't mess with any of them words about Jesus and about the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't miss it. This is a holy book, holy Bible. They've got no business putting on the NIV Bible and all these new Bibles, holy Bible. It's unholy. It's unholy teachings. There's only one Bible that was settled in eternity past. Settled in heaven forever. Amen. Did you know that? So if it was settled in heaven forever, he gave it to us in, in the English language just the way it should be. Amen? Amen. Even the jot and tittles, that's the little punctuation marks. All of that. <laughs> yeah. It says, and declared to be the Son of with power according to the Spirit of holiness. That's the Holy Ghost. By the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom are ye also called of Jesus Christ to all that are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God and from our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. What a, what a great opening. Now, this is the opening to the letter, okay? The opening to the letter. Now, what we're, what we're doing is the opening to this letter Um. We're going to probably, I'm not just, I mean, I think I, I don't, don't do service sometimes. If I had just jumped to chapter 7 and give you the first verse of chapter 8, it's kind of nice to start in the beginning of the letter, amen? Maybe you followed on me. I'm going to name this uh, uh, number one in Romans, and 
I'm going to send that out on on uh, Facebook like that. And then I'll have number two, number three, number four, number five, number six. I don't know how many there'll be. But I started thinking about it. We ought to kind of teach it and preach it the way God gave it to us. Amen? So then we build upon it. Because that's the way a letter is, you know. I mean, if a letter, and I mean, if someone's going to put a letter together right, don't you think it'd be God? I'm not very good. I have people that, that, that help me write. Uh, I got ideas. I know what I want to say. But sometimes people got to put it together. This supposed to be at the beginning, this in the middle, and this the end. You understand what I'm saying? It's, it's a construction of a letter or a message that you're supposed to get. I just kind of, uh, I, don't, I don't write out my messages. You know that because I just kind of say what I'm going to say. And uh, I've been preaching that way for 45 years. I ain't going to change now. Uh, I'm not gonna, I know some preachers, they, they write their sermons out completely. Completely write out a sermon. Amy, hey, uh, I never have. I don't have. I never have. I never have any notes, and I just preach. I don't know what you think of that or whatever, but uh, it works for me. That's the way I do it. And uh, and, and so anyway, uh, so um, here we go. So to all that are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, saints, saints. The Catholics make a big deal about naming people saints. They de-sainted St. Christopher, you know. When I was a young man, I wasn't saved. My mom and daddy were saved. I was raised in the church, but I used to have a lot of buddies, especially my football buddies, and, and uh, we'd go out and get, uh, get drunk on Friday night, and then we'd get, sleep in half the day, you know, like some of you do. And uh, there's some sleeping now supposed to be here. Uh, they're sleeping because they drunk last night. And you say, oh. You got drunkards coming to your church? Yeah, you got a lot of nasty people coming to your church, too. You think you got a perfect church, you're wrong. Sinners, I mean, they got a, a year. A, <laughs> your church members might hide their sin better than mine, amen? <laughs> but they got it, brother and sister. They got skeletons in their closet like Brother John Rice, my mentor. He, he used to have a book. Before I was saved, my mother had it on her bookshelf. And it said, when, cel when skeletons come out of their closets, and, and he had a, a picture of a skeleton on the front of that. Now, let me just get my attention. I didn't know, but after I got saved, they said John Rice was going to preach in, in uh, uh, near Milwaukee. And I remember, I said, skeletons come out of their closet. I'm going to go see him. And I went and seen him and fell in love with him. He, he led my 12-year-old son to Christ, best soul winner I've ever knew in my life, John R. Rice. And uh, when skeletons come out of their closet. Yeah. So to be a saint, I'm a saint, you're a saint. What do you have to do to be a saint? Saved. Amen. They must. They found skeletons in St. Christopher's closet because all them boys I used to run around with, all them football players and that, we, and our daddy's cars, remember, remember in the old 50s cars, they had a, they had a metal uh, dashboard on there. And what you have on there, all the Catholics, and I lived in a Roman Catholic neighborhood. They had them statues of St. Christopher on there. And that was supposed to, he, he was, what, what is he to, any Catholics in here, old Catholic? Uh, he was a patron saint of safety or something like that. They've got one, there's another patron saint for, uh, for pathetic people. Or, and uh, <laughs> they do. <laughs> Someone, a Catholic sent me in Milwaukee. Like a big stack of those things, must have been a thousand. And uh, they said, I, I want you to pass this out to all the pathetic people you have there to rescue mission. <laughs> I guess he didn't realize they're pretty pathetic yourself. And uh, and I, I did. I, I wrote work to them. I said, I won't pass them out because I ain't Catholic. And uh, I says, this little card you got uh, about some patron saint, a bunch of baloney. And, uh, but anyway, I'm a saint. Are you saved today? Amen. You're a saint. Saint Billy Joe. Amen. Saint, whoever put your name in there. You saved, you're a saint. Amen. You say, how do you know that? Because that's the way he started his, uh, that's the way he started his epistles. Uh, to the saint here in the saint. I'm not going to go read it to you. You can find it when you get to the, the various epistles. Uh, verse 8, Romans 1. 
First, starting off, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all. You didn't know Paul was a southerner, did you? Huh? Did you hear what he said there? You all. <laughs> right, Kevin? He's a southern boy. <laughs> you all. That your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. Wow. Man, this Romans was a famous church. Church at Romans. Let's put our name in there. Let's put the church at Daytona Beach. Amen. I think I think Paul could t teach us some stuff just like he could them people in, in Rome, don't you think? Yeah, I, I believe he could. So let's take it for ourselves as we're starting out in Romans and we're going to go through this and this will be lesson one in Romans and I don't know how far we'll get if we're probably even going to get through the first chapter. We'll get a little ways down here. Um, but anyway, uh, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole... Wouldn't it be wonderful if they told a beach that if the church here would be spoken of throughout the whole world? Amen. The whole world, that's what it said. Everybody, they're known. Wouldn't you like to be part of an area that was a spirit-filled church? Like sometimes, remember the revivals, when certain revivals would uh, would come up and... And I remember there was a Welch revival in some of those cities. And Charles Finney, who was a great evangelist, and, and, and he was a wonderful um, a man of God. Uh, Finney, uh, uh, he had revivals in, in many of the cities there in, uh, uh, in, in New England area and in New York and such. He was from the Northeast. And uh, those cities were known for their revivals. And Wesley was known for his revivals. And Spurgeon and Moody and so on and so forth. Wouldn't it be wonderful uh, if, uh, if it could be said about us, like Paul said about Rome, uh, that your, their faith is spoken of. What faith? Faith in Jesus Christ. The boy, this was a powerful church. This was a dynamite church. The dynamite of the gospel. We go on in the beginning of Romans chapter 1. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. Wow. Was Paul a prayer or not? He says without ceasing. Paul really prayed without ceasing. How many of us in this room pray without ceasing? None of us. I'm the first to raise my hand. I don't pray without ceasing. Why did Paul have the power that I didn't? I don't. Why did Finney have the power? I don't. Why did Moody have the power? I don't. Why did great men of God and great women of God have the power that we don't have? Because we don't pray without ceasing. God help us to pray at home more. God help us to pray when we're driving. Amen. I've turned off my stupid recordings. and I, The Bible ain't stupid, but I ain't even listening to my Bible when I'm riding in my car and I'm praying. Yeah. Amen. I'm praying. Amen. I'm praying. We have not because we ask not. I want to teach you how to pray. That's why I want you to come between 5 and 5.45 this afternoon so I can teach you to pray without ceasing and we can pray and we can get God's power upon us. Amen? Amen. Wouldn't it be something if the majority of this good crowd this morning would be back here for prayer at 5 and then for church at 6? We'll have, we'll have much better, better service at 6 if we pray at 5. I think often of the great churches in the world that have been churches where people have come. Hopefully we'll have that here someday. Where people pray continuously. Continuously. That great church there, I, I think of it because we're having the Olympics in South Korea. I wish they would have honored the Lord Jesus Christ. They, uh, the, the Olympic, uh, I watched some of that uh, opening exercise for it. It had a lot about paganism and and uh, dragons and uh, uh, they said that uh, they had a bunch of goblins or spooks or something dancing around with the fire of hell around them 
and everything, and they and they were telling you on there, it says, oh, uh, back in the ancient uh, uh, people of Korea, uh, these spooks and goblins and fire, uh, that was a good thing. Not come out of hell! Come out of hell! <clears throat> Why didn't they show Kim's church over there and 100,000 people in it <clears throat> when the photographer, I mean, when the newscaster went over from America to see what was going on, got there several hours early, <clears throat> and the pastor, and he went into the church auditorium hours before the servants, <clears throat> and thousands of people were on their face before God praying. How do you think to get a thousand people uh, pray? How, how do you think to get hundreds of thousands of people saved? And they got a prayer mountain where they pray in these little cubicles in the mountain, 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. See? You ain't going to find all that around America. Ain't no people. We have not because we have no revival, no nothing. Our lives are sorry because we don't pray. God help us. We need to repent. Do you see that church? Do you understand it? Will you acknowledge that you're prayerless and you don't pray like you ought to? I got my hand up. How about you? We don't pray like we ought to. World's going to hell. We live like the devil. We don't go to church on Sunday night and pray. We watch the Super Bowl. God help us, Christians. God help us. At that Super Bowl last week, we had people that claimed to be evangelical, born-again Christians. Uh, instead of having uh, church, showed the stupid Super Bowl in their church. Instead of having church. Can you imagine that, Billy Joe? I wish Jesus would come down when he was playing the Super Bowl. When they're supposed to have been praying and preaching. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Boy, they sure have been ashamed at the coming of Jesus, wouldn't they, huh? We've got to get real, folks. I ain't getting very far in this, but we're going along. <laughs> Spoken of throughout the whole world. Verse 9. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the God. That says, my spirit. You see, let me say something about my spirit. I might just finish up on this. Every, every one of us has a spirit, you understand. Do you know what? You know what controls me? My spirit. I don't care if you're saved or you're lost. Your spirit controls you. Now, even me as a Christian, my spirit will control me. I can yield my spirit to the Holy Spirit and be controlled by the Holy Spirit and walk in the Spirit and not fulfill the lusts and desires of the flesh. My spirit's going to control me and rule me as yours will. If you're saved and you don't read the Bible and you don't pray and, 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 and you read worldly books, I feel people outside wait to come in in the line I see them out there sitting down reading novels and reading foolishness and uh, I just like to snatch it out of their hand and stick a Bible in, in their face they could read the Bible well some people do some people out there read the Bible when they're waiting to come in a lot of you you read st uh, foolishness stupidity we need to read the Bible praise God <laughs> With my friend Guy Maul. Yeah, we let him. How about this? Do that? I don't know what to do. Happy birthday, Sabrina. Sabrina and Guy Maul used to go to my church in Milwaukee, in Mission Church there, and he's a preacher in Arizona now, and his dear wife, Sabrina. What a godly woman. It was her birthday day before yesterday. Happy birthday. So he just come out here, too. That's the only thing wrong with preaching with this thing. It shows you names coming up higher and everything. People are dear to me and that found the Lord back in Milwaukee and now uh, pastoring the church in Arizona. Isn't that good, Brother Billy Joe? That makes me happy, amen? You get old like me, you can get 
start clipping coupons. I've got people around the country pastoring churches and been saved and working in God's work. Don't you wish someone that you got saved played in the LFL? I wouldn't give you a nickel for an NFL player. You say, if they could testify, let them testify all they want. I'd rather get someone saved to be a missionary <laughs> or a pastor. Amen. Huh? Yeah. We've made heroes of, God bless them, I'm glad there's some Christians that are professional athletes, but I'm just telling you, God don't care about football or baseball or basketball. or anything. You know what? That's some little child's entertainment, huh? And we're going to make heroes out of, out of these fellas. Big, big part of them are, big part of them are dope heads and womanizers. Am I telling the truth or not? Yeah, yeah. you got a few of them are goody two shoes, but a lot of them are party guys and a bunch of adulterers and fornicators. You got the women lined up down the block because they're a big hero, huh? <laughs> Lord Jesus Christ is my hero, and Paul and. Charles Finney and D.L. Moody and John Rice and Jack Hiles. I got my heroes. Amen. <laughs> Time is it? Time to quit? We didn't get far. My spirit, the son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayer. There again, the prayers, the prayers, the prayers. We just got started in Romans. This is going to be in lesson one. I'm going to do some more. Probably give you some more on it tonight. But uh, the big question, are you saved? We got, we got people in church here today because they've told me with their own mouth they're not saved. There's people in this church right now sitting in here that aren't saved. There's people out there in Facebook that aren't saved. I'm going to give you a chance to get saved right now. Let's pray. Lord, thank you now for... The book of Romans, we're going to preach on it for a while. It uh, gave me a whole new direction uh, this morning, and here we go. And, uh, we're in church here. You say, preacher, heads are bowed, eyes are closed. You say, preacher, I'm saved, and I know it. Would you raise your hand? I'm saved, and I know it. All right, you may put your hands down. Got some hands raised in the church, a number of hands. You're in church and you say, Pastor, if I die tonight, I'm not sure I'd go to heaven. I need prayer about it. Would you slip your hand up? You say, I'm not sure. Yes, yes, yes. Is there others? Wouldn't hurt. St yes, God bless you. Any others? I'm not sure if I died, I'd go to heaven. Pray for me. Just slip. Wouldn't hurt to be prayed for, would it? Come on. Yeah, yeah, I see your hands. Amen. I see your hands. Amen, 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 amen. Lord, a bunch of hands raised. Oh, dear Lord, with all that's in me, I pray that these dear ones would see the simplicity of the gospel and would get saved today and have a marvelous conversion to Christ and be free indeed through the power of the gospel. Save them. How about out there on Facebook? You need to be saved. I can't see you, but you can trust Christ. I pray that God is convicting your heart. He has already. Call upon him in simple faith like a child. We're going to pray the sinner's prayer. I prayed for you, dear one, that you get saved here in church and out there. Let's pray the sinner's prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and shed your precious blood on Calvary's cross, rose to the grave the third day. The best I know how, with an honest heart, I turn from my sins. I repent. I change my mind. I see I can't save myself, Lord. I believe you died for my sins. I believe you rose again. And I'm putting my total trust in you right now, receiving the free gift. Save me now, dear Lord. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. You said, Pastor, I did it now. I meant it. I meant it. Raise your hand. Let me see your hands. Raise them up. I did it today. Raise your hand. Let me see your hands. Put them up high. Put them up high. Put them up high. Put them up high. 
me put your hands down. Lord, thank you for these eight precious souls here in church. Oh, I hope they've made a real heartfelt commitment to Christ. Amen. As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them believe upon his name. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I pray for you out there in Facebook also. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Dear one, you're here in church, you're out in Facebook. You haven't been living right. You haven't been praying enough. You've got too much worldliness. God's spoken to you about it. The Holy Ghost has spoke to you. Repent. Yeah, Christians need to repent. You don't get saved over. Christians, 1 John 1, 9, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Help us, Lord. Help us. Help me. Help these others. Help we that name the name of Christ to be holy, holy vessels. Holy unto thee. Help us now. Thank you for our service. Thank you for the food to follow. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now listen to me. Facebook, I'll be on a little after 6 tonight. Send this to someone. Let them hear it. They need it. God bless you. We'll talk to you this evening.